everyone. This is Mark Samadini from Clear Connected Enterprise, and I'm here again with Dave Loper from Clear Center. And today we want to talk a little bit about use cases, specifically around the small insular office or the SOHO. We'd like to cover today what does a, a SOHO or a small insular office look like? Why is it designed that way? And then give a little bit of a story behind uh, this use case. So, Dave? Thanks. So, ClearOS really w works well in uh, the small office. Uh, you know, we're talking about very, that's kind of the micro office. And, you know, we're talking about uh, businesses that might be like light manufacturing, where they've got some, uh, you know, tasks that they're doing, and they're really their, their main focus, and maybe the bulk of their employees are all out in the yard doing doing things and they have a small, you know, administrative office that just has a few people in it. You know, this might be a big company, right? But when it comes to the number of computers they have on, on hand, they may only have like five or six. Um, or, you know, we could be talking about like a services industry where you have a, a hair salon or a nail par parlor or some sort of medical or dental office where they're, uh, they have a small staff, right? Maybe uh, under 25 people. Um, you know, you see that uh, type of scenario also in the retail with, you know, point of sale. There's not really, the activities that are going on there are not, you know, computer heavy. They're, they're having to do with something else. So the people that actually have computers and need to use them is kind of small, even though they might have, you know, a bunch of computer hardware with point of sale machines. Um, you know, we're also, you know, real estate offices or small legal offices might fit into this category as well. Cleros is really, really designed uh, for working well in this environment because um, it can, it's a multi-purpose platform. So in larger companies, you may be using ClearOS for a very specific task, but with these small insular offices, you can use ClearOS as kind of an all-in-one scenario to basically address everything that they might need from uh, file print and messaging, you know, as an application server, uh, as a uh, internet gateway to prevent you know bad stuff from coming in and preventing bad stuff that may be brought on site by a worker through a bring your own device scenario or an infected laptop uh, doing containment things like that um, or you know also as a, a network infrastructure appliance uh, to provide the basic services you need on a network so um, this is really really important because you know, a uh, small office will always need um, some sort of um, uh, device. Even if they're doing everything in the cloud, they're going to need something on site to protect the uh, PCs that may be on site or the mobile devices or the, um, the, the you know, whatever application that they're using on site. And, it, and once you have ClearOS there, you, you have this flexibility, right, you, to use as much cloud as you want or as, much, as little cloud. Sometimes these small organizations are really suspicious of putting uh, their information out onto the cloud. Um, some, in, some will embrace it. So the nice thing is, is ClearOS is flexible enough to do as much or as little of the file and you know, mail services or you know, application server. Um, now ClearOS is Linux, and so sometimes you have a uh, small business that may have a particular line of business app that you know, only runs in Windows. So one of the things that you can do also because ClearOS is a multi-purpose platform is you could actually run as a virtual machine the line of business app that they have and then use ClearOS to all centrally manage the, you know, the gateway and the, uh, the network side of things, whereas their uh, application that they use for the line of business is still kind of in the mix. So when we look at the different uh, segments that we have here, uh, and in this course unit, we're going to really focus on the, the gateway. Um, this is really, really important for small business and these insular offices because um, small businesses, believe it or not, are targets for hackers. They really are. And part of the reason for that is because um, hackers will like to use these small businesses as staging grounds to launch uh, distributed attacks against other places. Small businesses typically don't have a large IT spend. and so. Oftentimes there's a weakness around the uh, antivirus they may have on site or, you know, or the uh, security that they have on their application servers or 
you know, just some best practices may be missing that, you know, uh, an organization that has a dedicated IT staff will, uh, you know, be enforcing, right? So it's a little bit more fast and loose in a small business. But that doesn't uh, eliminate the need uh, to protect them. And ClearOS comes with a lot of great uh, gateway stuff that we'll cover in the other other units, but stuff like uh, just just stopping them from going to places that would uh, you know have malicious content at the gateway level, or filtering them for the content to try to keep them productive um, and on task. We also have applications that can can stop certain behaviors. You know, maybe the boss doesn't want Facebook uh, you know running. In, in the network, but he's he's powerless to stop them if he's not there looking over the shoulder of his employees. Sometimes this gives him you know tools that are uh, you know within budget, and by within budget I mean you know free in, in some cases. Um, also, it brings you know world class uh, intrusion uh, detection uh, mechanisms through um, our intrusion detection system and prevention system, as well as the ability to block attackers who are persistently trying to brute force against their, their service. Mostly small businesses don't even know that they're under attack all the time and that they're that they're getting hit. So this is really good for uh, those partners out there that are looking to create value for their customers because in most cases many small businesses probably feel like uh, an antivirus software is all that they really need to stop attacks but they need to be educated on what other surface areas they're leaving exposed and this provides that opportunity for them to do that, have that discussion with them. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you, you find with a lot of small businesses that um, some IT um, organizations that typically may do managed services um, for small businesses, or you know, the these, this, you know, they may shy away from the small business. They know they don't have a very big IT spend, and so they they might say, oh well, you know, they can't afford. My really expensive solution that you know has you know three parts to it. I've got this you know great gateway stuff that really works well for my larger clients. I've got this great you know server uh, infrastructure that works really well for my big big clients. But you know once you get dropped down to a certain uh, uh, size of business, they just simply can't afford those tools. Uh, and you know ClearOS is here to be able to kind of fill that gap. And while doing that. You know, it's really important for partners to position the, the labor that they, they do for these, these customers in such a way that, you know, they're not losing money. I've known of certain uh, MSPs out there that they service, you know, a really small client, not because they're making any money off of them or, or that they're, in, in, in some cases, they're losing money off of them. I've seen providers provide service to a client even when they're losing money to them because they just love how hard they're working and trying, you know, they have this spirit of entrepreneurship and, and, and then that creates a, a really rough situation because then it's like you feel, uh, you feel like you can't uh, service them as well as your big client because they're not, uh, your big client is actually putting, you know, food on your table whereas the little client is kind of a drain and sucks the life out of you. We were able to, I used to come from a, the managed service provider. Uh, space and we were able to turn that paradigm around so that for our sales engineers and for our staff it was actually profitable using this model because with clear OS we're putting in really stable tools so we're not chintzing on the technology what we are doing is we're leveraging the open source and and the management that comes through that to make that uh, affordable so uh, there's some main reasons why ClearOS was de designed uh, this way uh, and really suits well for this type of uh, lost revenue space, which is a huge market. And number one, it was, it was designed this way to reduce the IT spend. So there's a certain level in, your, in, in the tools that you'll deliver to a particular uh, set of customers that it just no longer becomes profitable anymore. But ClearOS can make it so that you have profitable models for delivering IT service to these small insular offices, even if they're uh, a one-person shop or a, a home office that's got one guy that works from home. You can still uh, protect his network and put in ClearOS at an affordable cost, especially on HPE gear and the microserver that has that has come out, because you know it's a very low-cost way to put uh, you know some 
threat management into an organization that, or a, a, an infrastructure that may have nothing at all. And so there's an instant return on uh, investment for the, the customer. And when we're talking about support going from a, a cost of, you know, where you've got a lot of included support that goes through Clear Center or, you know, no support at all, you're just using the free community edition, that there's a huge uh, variable there for uh, providing extra value at the managed services uh, level. And what you're saying when you say free is you're, you're talking open source, open source software that is free. And the value that Clear Center has provided to Clear OS is integrating all those free components so that it's not, you're not taking and wasting all that time and energy to do that. You're just really implementing the technologies that you've already been touching. That's right. So a lot of times when you're using open source, if you know if you're familiar with that, uh, what that typically looks like, that 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 become means you know, as soon as somebody says that, that, that means oh you got to be super knowledgeable about you know Linux and command line, and you got to know all of this you know uh, code that is uh, you know from you know that it grows up from Unix. You know, there's the there's the uh, uh, old phrase that you know those those who uh, uh, do not you know familiarize themselves with Unix are doomed to uh, reinvent it badly, right? So uh, th that comes into play oftentimes when you talk about how technical things need to get in order to provide some really robust enterprise type services. But what we do with ClearOS is we make it really simple and we keep business in mind uh, and we target these scenarios. So rather than setting up certain applications that just kind of our general purpose for you know whatever spectrum we're targeting specific use cases with business so that we can make it really turnkey so that means we're making assumptions about how you're going to use open source but we don't lock you out of it um, and you can still do customizations if you want to but there's no no problem running the software as is to you know create your your gateway your server uh, your, your network stack so uh, another, uh, the second thing that we wanted to do was to make sure that we simplified management. And I talked a little bit about that. Um, so management with ClearOS is as easy as coming into, you know, whatever application that it is that you want to, to run and to uh, set it up and run. So for example, uh, MariaDB is a, uh, micro, is a MySQL uh, replacement. Um, it was... If you've heard of MySQL and, and is how it's used in different apps, maybe with like web apps, uh, MariaDB is one of those uh, apps that uh, is super uh, efficient in cost because, well, it's free, right? And so now you get a, uh, the power of a, of, a, of a database without having to uh, do a big spend. And for, for this application, as you can see here, I've, I've gone from start to finish here. I did the password wrong twice. Put that in twice here the right way. I've started it. I've put in the password. I'm going to have you hold the mic here for a sec. Okay, and as you can see, it's really rather simple to get that going on. Uh, clear OS so it's already up and running and it's set up and from here you would go and you would use the management tool that is familiar to every you know all these people that use uh, MySQL so if you have like a, a web administrator or somebody who's doing your website they'll be very familiar with this type of a tool which lets them manage the database um, but from clear OS's perspective it's just as simple as getting it up and running setting the minimal uh, things that are needed and then going to town on uh, on that sort of uh, an interface. So that's that's an example of how simple the interface is to use. Um, there are a lot of other applications and you're going to want to go through the video series to understand how those work together. But for the perspective of a, of a small but insular business, you're going to want to pay attention to the system setup. You're going to want to go through the various different things that are here. And what's nice about ClearOS is if you get started with this system setup, it's going to uh, tell you about things that are going to need to happen. 
So for this uh, application, for example, we've done an Active Directory connector, right? And you can set up ClearOS in an insular office, so they don't have to ha have an Active Directory connector. They can, you can just use ClearOS as a, a directory server. So you have an option there for something that is completely free for a small insular office. They may not need the group policies, and they may never ha even have a, an Active Directory domain controller. And you may say, oh, well, I want to just set them up with a few user accounts. These are offices that are typically doing local machine-based usernames and passwords. And you're, you're taking them to a next level where they have a central directory. That's a huge paradigm shift. But it puts them in the camp of being within best practices. That means that they're going to be able to do um, some of the other things that this is designed for. And that is so that it can be, uh, have compliance. So certain best practices require a user and group-based authentication. Well, if they're using just PCs in their network, they're, they're probably not doing that. And there's a huge opportunity here to put in a directory server that enforces kind of the group uh, policies for uh, PCI compliance or for you know, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley or for uh, HIPAA, for example. And you'd be surprised there are still some doctor's offices out there that you know, may not have a really good HIPAA policy, um, but that, I mean, that's a huge risk for the small business, right, not to have it. But they might not be able to afford it. But now, ClearOS, you can put in those types of things because it was designed for that. Um, one of the things we found in the managed services sector was that when we deployed solutions like this, that the, uh, the cost for the IT spend also went down because the support costs were reduced. Because the interface is really easy to use, that means a managed service provider can do much of the support that needs to happen for ClearOS on their tier one level of support. So we had a complete reduce in escalation of tickets so that 95% of our, our tickets were able to be resolved on tier one support because the management interface was easy enough for it, you know, super easy for even the tier one guys to to, to, uh, to handle it. What we found was that our tier two, when we had a three tier support, became fairly uh, unnecessary because escalations were either, you know, for, for problems were either here at the uh, web interface, which tier one was able to handle with that, their technical skill, or would, you know, be to, you know, command line where somebody really goofed something up and, you know, because they were doing something in, in customization. So one of, the, um, one of the successes that we had for this solution was a uh, manufacturing uh, company. And they did a lot of uh, steel work. So they'd take steel and they'd, you know, they'd bend it and shape it, they'd cut it, they, they did all that stuff. It had about 70 employees. So it was a larger company, um, but their IT spend was really rather low, uh, what they could afford. And, and, and maybe that's because they didn't know that they could afford more, but they really, uh, I mean, IT represented such a small fraction of what they did in their, in their offices. They had five employees, you know, two of them were sales guys, and the rest were administrative assistants. So this is a, a company, super small. It benefited a lot from cloud-based applications, but when it came to servicing them as a managed service provider, you're still talking about, you know, a firewall, a you know, a router, a firewall, uh, you know, a file server, an application server, those types of things in a typical environment. We went and replaced that solution with a solution uh, based on ClearOS, and we were able to cut their IT from, uh, you know, in, by you know, by 75 percent. So we we're talking an IT spend over three years that was, uh, you know, projected out in the three hundred thousand dollar range. With, you know, when it came to all of the software services and support that we were providing as a, a managed service provider, being dropped down to a fifty, sixty thousand dollars spent over three years. So that's the type of leverage that you get out of this platform, and we're really, really happy to bring this type of a solution to a, a, a space that we feel is very, very rich uh, in in um, opportunity for the managed service provider. Still, that's awesome. Thanks, Dave, for uh, taking us through this. Um, 
We hope that you found this beneficial. We uh, covered uh, what a small insular office would look like, kind of the elements and, and the complexion of, of that type of a company or an industry. We covered some of the roles that they would need to, to do from file messaging and application server to internet gateway and network appliance. We talked about what it's designed for and went through a brief example. So uh, if you're interested in hearing more, please come back and watch other screencasts that we'll do on the gateway. Thanks for tuning in and we'll talk soon.